What is up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Hockey Town University. You are here with me once again, for those of you returning, Zach, with the lovely co host Derek and Matt, with our playoff beards and mustaches, minus Leslie. What's up, boys? Leslie, I'll let you go first. You can defend yourself. Yeah, so I would like to clarify that I would grow a playoff beard if my girlfriend would allow me to. She says I am too scratchy when I am trying to grow a beard, so it will never happen. Maybe in no shape November I'll be allowed to grow one, but until then, I'm not married, but happy wife, happy life. I will stay clean shaven, and she will get the nice smooth kisses from me. And, yeah, I, I'm doing good over here. Um, my Islanders are down one nothing right now, and uh, they're losing in the series. So, um, really wish it could go back in time three days ago and pick a different team because my God, these guys are losers. Sorokin's gonna end the series with two hundred saves and probably get swept, at least out in five games. But, goddamn, goddamn, did I ever make a mistake? So I guess have fun Kings picking seventeen or eighteen Red Wings. Um, before Derek goes, uh, Derek, Loki, I really do wish that my facial hair grew in a little bit darker like yours because my one side looks very light compared to my other side. <laughs> so, <laughs> Derek, how's it going, buddy? How are you doing? Uh, apparently a lot better you in the facial hair area. <laughs> yeah, it's growing in nicely. I don't shave after I shave once, so of course it grows back and you really can't see the mustache anymore and it's only been like, you know, a week, but whatever. I'll live with it. I'll eventually shave it again or... The girlfriend will kill me. I don't know. She hates the shaved face. So, like Leslie, I don't get the kisses. Get y'all a girlfriend that requests you to get the stash going. Come on, man. Let's get it going. Come on. It's playoff season, baby. All right. You guys know what that means is that the playoffs have already kicked off on Monday. Uh, we will have Derek reveal his playoff bracket and <laughs> it's pretty funny we'll have him do that towards the end of the episode so make sure you stick around to watch that but we wanted to thank you all for returning once again if you are returning uh for those of very new thanks for joining us we really do appreciate it and as always make sure you're hitting that subscribe button and for everyone who is watching or listening wherever you do uh view us on your platforms make sure you're hitting the like button make sure you're rating us five stars on spotify if you're on there it really does go a long way for us we want to be able to get more out there and be able to provide more content for Red Wings fans, NHL fans, whoever likes which. It doesn't matter. We want to entertain you guys. So let's go ahead and kick it off with some Red Wings news. Uh, basically, not very much news. We're patiently waiting for the draft lottery. Hard for Bedard and silly for Fantilli. Yeah. What are the odds of us getting number one, Zach? Uh, 5%. Crunch. <laughs> it's it please, a viable, Kevin, please. Zach, when was the last time somebody in a place of getting 10th seed in the draft got the first seed in the draft? Wow. Um Never. that's a very good question. I would have to go back and look at that. So that's I'm actually gonna write that down. That'll be my homework for the next episode, Derek. You got me questioning questioning myself now. But if anyone who is watching this Go ahead and put it in the comment section for me so that way I can cheat a little bit on my homework. That question almost feels like assault, Derek, because I feel like it's never happened, and that's what we need to have happen. So thanks for assaulting us and the listeners. Well, Zach told us he didn't have any sneak attack questions this time, so I was like, well, might as well bombard him with one from me. I feel like I felt he was left out a little bit from that. I appreciate you guys throwing me curveballs. It makes me very, very happy. Yeah. So, I don't know who it was, but uh, like I said, if you guys know in the comments, if you're watching, please let me know. It helps me out, cheat on my homework. Um, I'll take anything for an easy grade, trust me, especially from Derek. So, another news on the Red Wings. We got a couple players that have been announced to go over to the World Championships. We got Raymond with Team Sweden, Jan and Tim Bergeren with Team Sweden as well. So it's nice to see that those two will be playing together. Joe Valeno will be playing with Canada. Wallman is waiting to determine <laughs> which country wants to take him, whether if that's Canada or the United States, due to his dual citizenship. So, uh, yeah, he's just waiting to see who wants him more, I guess. So uh, I asked Leslie to confirm this for me, and I don't think we managed to get that figured out, and I should have looked myself. 
but I think Mata might be going for Finland as well. I could be wrong, so if you guys want to let me know in the comment section, that would be great as well. Uh, Leslie, do you want to speak about your uh, concerns on Lucas Raymond? Oh, I guess so. I mean, I wouldn't really say that there are concerns. I just kind of feel like I, I understand why he wants to go over into this competition and compete for Team Sweden. I think over here in the U.S., we don't really understand how big of a tournament this is for those European players. Like, over here, we're kind of just concerned with the Stanley Cup Finals. And over in Europe, this is actually kind of a big deal for those clubs because, I mean, mainly it is played in Europe. And I don't know. That's just how it is over there. So I, I kind of understand it. Um it might be good for him to get some some reps and some more games. Some, I mean, there's actually kind of meaningful games for him. I know they don't really mean anything in the grand scheme of things, but I don't know. I, I hope after this tournament, no matter what the result is for Team Sweden, I hope he's back here in the U.S. just training, getting stronger. I, I think he has all the tools to bounce back next year, and I think he will. I have full confidence in him, but I really – really want to see him put some muscle on. I, that, that's what he needs. I mean, Iserman and Lone have said it themselves. This team, one of the number one problems facing them is they're not tough enough. And I guess it doesn't just stop with Lucas Raymond. I want to see everyone on the team get tougher and stronger and bigger. So, yeah, I think he'll be okay. And I respect his decision to play in this tournament. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like we said in the uh, chat, too, like, you do have reasons to be concerned. Like, you know, he had a big hit taken from Ben Trot. He was out for, it was about two or three weeks or so, so he was out for quite some time. He missed a number of games, and once he came back, he really didn't look the same. So I watched his end-of-the-season uh, media outlet today that he had, and, you know, he was asked about it, and he said, you know, when you're playing in the regular season – if you get injured and you're out, the best thing you can do is try to get yourself back to 100% as quickly as you can before you do get in. And sometimes, you know, you aren't always fully 100%, and that's just a regular thing in the NHL. And I'm sure that's something Derek can attest to. I'm sure he's played plenty of hockey games where he was injured but still managed to pull it out and try to help his team out as best as he could. So, yeah, I mean, I think – at the end of the day, too, yes, it is his decision, but I'm sure him and Steve Eisenman, maybe Derek Lalone, uh, probably shed some light on it to make sure, you know, is this the right move? You know, if, if it was an injury concern. So um, I have full faith in the organization to make sure that it's the right call, um, make sure that he's not going to get injured again before he makes uh, the leap back over to the United States while they're over there in Switzerland. But who knows? We'll just have to wait and see. But, yeah, hopefully he has a good uh, tournament over there with Bergeron and uh, – Come back with gold. That would be cool. I would like that. So, uh, Derek, do you want to speak on that a little bit at all? No? That's okay. I, uh, I mean, I'll give you the standpoint, but yeah, you do, like you said, you do play with those kind of injuries. Like, you try to ignore that kind of stuff, too. It doesn't really get in the way a lot of the time. Like, who was the one we just brought up that had to get sent back down now and out? Now is out for six months because of his kneecap. Oh, Marco? Marco Gasper, yeah, Marco Casper. Yeah. I was going to say, like, dude literally played, like, half a game with a split kneecap. Like, you play through yeah. it. Like, I play with so many stints, casts, and little fucking things on my legs and arms. It's like, you just kind of play through the pain. After a while, it doesn't hurt that bad. And just to let you know, as of 2.46 p.m. today from M Live News, Ollie is saying that he has plan on playing. As of five hours right, ago. Nice. All right, so Got that you. totals, yeah, that totals up five Red Wings players making it to the Worlds, and you know, they'll if you want to wait on Malman, that would make it five, you know. But who knows? There's still a month ago until they decide, or not decide, but when they'll actually play. So maybe a couple more Red Wings players will get that call. Who knows? We'll wait and see. But um, and I just remembered that I didn't really break down for you guys what we had in store today. So today we are reviewing the forwards with the Red Wings. Uh, I did uh, not tell Derek and Matt about this because there were some players that I did leave off of the list that we made that the minimum requirement was to play at least 10 games if you were a forward or a defenseman. Uh, goalies, since we have three of them, two of them under 20 games, I just said we'll do all three. So today we're just going to specifically talk about the forwards. 
On Sunday's episode, we will touch on the defensemen, the goalies, and then we'll just do our overall team grade on that night episode as well. So, uh, but let's go ahead and talk about around the league news. I didn't realize this until today. The U18 IIHF, sorry guys, World Championships begin tomorrow, the 20th, in Switzerland. Uh, six hour difference. So the first game of the tournament does kick off between Canada and Sweden at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and I'm just realizing that I said that the world championships for the older players were also in <laughs> in Switzerland. So I don't know if that's true. So don't mind me on that. But anyway, so yes, the current tournament will kick off tomorrow morning at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, I don't know about you guys. I might be watching this tournament a little bit more than the playoffs only because, well, clearly the Red Wings aren't in it. And there's just something about young players trying to showcase right before the draft that, hey, I want to be taken at five instead of seven, or you guys have me ranked at 30th. Let's see what I can do to bump myself up. And I just want to spit out some names that are included in this tournament. And some might be familiar to you guys. Some might not. Luke, they're in no specific order, by the way. But Lucas Dragasevich, Colby Barlow, Matt Wood, Andrew Kristal, Callum Ritchie, Axel Sandin Pelica, Noah Dower Nilsson. He's the brother of uh, Liam Dower Nilsson on the Red Wings. Tom Willander, not Wallander, Willander. They're not related. <laughs> I found that out the hard way today as well. Will Smith. Gabe Perot, Ryan Leonard, Oliver Moore, Cole Hudson, who is a 24 draft eligible player, Cole Eiserman, who's also a top 24 draft eligible player, Edward Sale, and Dalibor Dvorsky. Uh, there's probably a couple more that I missed on there. If you guys would like to, go ahead and leave those in the comments as well. I'd love to learn some other players. These are just some of the more bigger name players. Uh, I still need to do my homework on second round picks in this year's draft, so... We'll wait and see. Do you guys have any specific players on this list that you guys are excited to see or want to see a little more of? Any ideas? Smith, Leslie, baby. I'll let you go first. Well, I mean, I'm excited to see all of them, but I don't really know if I'll be tuning into this tournament because it's at 8.30 in the morning. You know, I'm usually getting in the shower and making my breakfast at that time, so probably won't be tuning in, but... I will, I'll be keeping a, a side eye on it. You know, I'll, I'll keep a close eye on it and see how these guys do. Truthfully, I'm excited for everybody because there is a chance we could get pretty much everybody that you mentioned. So, yeah, um, I, I guess just whoever comes out of that tournament looking the best, their draft stock is going to rise up, and it's going to make uh, the draft lottery and really the draft in, in general really, really interesting after this tournament. So... I think out of the guys that you mentioned, uh, you mentioned a lot of guys, so I'll just try and single out some guys. I think uh, Dvorsky, Will Smith, Colby Barlow, I'm going to pick those three guys as having the best tournament. And we'll see when the tournament's over if I'm right. All right. I like it. Derek, I know you probably don't know a single one of these players, but um, are you going to be interested in watching at all? Oh, my goodness, guys. I would definitely be interested in watching these games if I wasn't at work at 8 a.m. in the morning every single day. So, no, I will not. Well, not every game is at 8.30 in the morning, guys. Like, realize that. Like, there's going to be night games, too. (laughs) How late? If they're in Sweden, six hours apart, like, how late? No, Switzerland. They're in Switzerland. Whatever. S names, places. They all play hockey. But, yeah, I mean, unless there's a game at, like, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock at night and we're not recording, not going to be watching too much of it. But on the other side, I'd love to see what Will Smith do, can do just because I still remember his performance with, um, what's his nuts? Uh, Chris Rock. Dude, Chris Rock, thank you. With that smack, oh, I'd love to see what he can do on the ice. Didn't know he was this young, though. I think Will Smith is going to have a really big tournament. I I dare even say that there might be some men in black going over there to watch him play. NHL GMs. Sorry, I had to sneak one in there. I mean, it's just it's too easy right now. you got to throw them all in there. 
It really is. I mean, it's going to be a great day for whatever team drafts this kid. I mean, it's pretty much going to be like Independence Day over here in the U.S. So, yeah, a pretty good day for them. Dang it. You, you beat me to it. That was the one I was thinking. Oh, man. All right. Well, boys, glad to hear that. If I had to pick someone, yeah, I guess probably not to really piggyback off of you guys, Will Smith. Um, It will be interesting to see these 24 draft eligible players. They're both on Team Canada. I know Cole Eiserman is projected right now to at least be a top five player. Um, It could be top three for what I know. But uh, that's probably someone that I'll keep my eye on as well. Um. Other than that, maybe Axel Sandin Pelica. I know the Red Wings are in need of getting right-handed shooting defensemen, so that might be someone that I'm interested in watching, as well as Lucas Dragasevich. So I'll make those three my main targets, Will Smith, uh, Pelica, and Dragasevich. So um, let's go ahead and move on, though. Uh, let's talk about some playoff action for a little bit. Uh, did anyone have any surprises that they witnessed in the first game of each series so far? Let me let me go over a couple before you guys answer those questions. So Seattle beat the Avs three to one. Tampa beats Toronto seven to three. The Kings beat the Oilers four to three in overtime. Thoughts? Well, I do have Any a game? I, I do have a little uh, fun fact to share with you guys. Oh boy! So last night, so we're recording this episode April nineteenth. Last night, every game one, every home team lost. Is that interesting? Whoa. Okay. Well, I yep. didn't notice that one. Wait. I didn't either. Nice little factoid. Every home there. team lost. Last last night, every home team lost. Oh, okay. Last night. Okay. I was gonna say, didn't Boston win? I was like, what? Okay. No, I'm yeah, I'm strictly talking about last night. Okay. Wow. All right. Well, to throw on top of that, the only thing I thought was pretty interesting is the fact that Edmonton and or uh, Colorado both lost. I mean, it was in overtime for Edmonton. I'll give them that. And LA has been on fire for the last half of the season too. But <laughs> Colorado, what you doing over there? You got a bunch of kids kicking your butt. What is happening? That that like. I wonder if it's. I wonder if it's the Landeskog effect because he's not returning at all. Not at all. Yeah, he's that's gone for the entire playoffs. That's a huge piece to your team right there. I mean, like, yes, you Just do your have captain. McKinnon, you do have Rainton, and you do have McCarr, but, like, yeah, that's your captain, and he's a center, and that's huge. I'm pretty sure they were already struggling at the center position all year, pretty much. I mean, he's been gone so for a that he's not returning. Too, so. I mean, the whole season, he didn't play. The whole season, he was out. Good. We hate them. I have him out. First round. See ya. So... Yeah, for me, I would say it was surprising, but it wasn't surprising at the same time was the Tampa Bay-Toronto game. And um, before we actually go into that, it was a 7-3 to three game. Tampa obliterated them after Michael Bunting incident, and we'll talk about that as well. But I want to talk about some other things that happened during the first game of the playoffs for each series. Well, not for each one, but yeah. So Jets center Morgan Barron gets 75 stitches in the face after basically being pushed into the Vegas Golden Knights goalie skate. Oh um, that was just- it was accidental, but I saw the player's hand kind of pushing him down. But I saw <laughs> his or not the interview that he had, but like, you know, you're scrolling on Instagram or whatever. And then like someone writes out the text, whatever. And he's like, yeah, I mean, I saw and I was just trying to put my hand down to make sure I didn't get it. But. That was a brutal video to watch. And he came back and he played in the game. He was back within like, what, like 10, 15 minutes or something like that. Yeah, 75 mm-hmm. stitches. They can go in pretty quick when you have a doctor on deck. It's okay. Man. Had the birdcage on and everything. Um, warrior or what? Like, holy shit. That's a hockey player right there, my man. Holy shit. That, oh, yeah. Just looking at his face afterwards because I, of course. Every replay you try will not show the blood nowadays. But they Bro, just kept, I just saw the face freeze on a skate, and I was like, I don't even know how to see what happened after that. Yeah, dude, it, like, laid on the skate. It was like, oh, my God, this guy's about to lose an eyeball. But, um, yeah, it was just insane. It was probably – it probably will be the scariest thing that we see for the rest of the playoffs. Hopefully, that is. But I can only imagine what his face looks like today because normally when players get those cuts – 
their face bruise is up pretty bad too. Oh, so, the fact that he's still wearing a helmet came out and play and all the sweat and nastiness of just the helmet and sweat itself getting into it. It could be infected too, and he probably won't care. He will play next game as well, unless he's dying. You're making my face hurt just thinking about it, buddy. <laughs> so let's go let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Mad Dumba laid a huge hit on Joe Pavelski and seems to be the first public enemy in the playoffs. I don't know if you guys saw the hit, but I want to hear your thoughts on it. Um, Cronwell okay. is someone that comes to mind who does the big hip checks like that. Um, I'm the guy who goes on social media and riles everyone up. I was like, dirty hit from a dirty player. I don't believe it really was a dirty hit. It was late. Um, a clean hip check, but the hit came late. That's my opinion on it. Leslie, yours? Well, initially when I watched the hit live... It really looked like he elevated and, like, put his shoulder into Joe Pavelski's face. I think this hit looks a lot worse based on how Pavelski landed on the ice. Like, it, that was scary, and I think that's... I don't really know what happened to Pavelski. I don't know if he has a concussion. I sure hope not, because he has a history with that. But the way he landed definitely made it look a lot worse, and I... I mean, it, I'd struggle to really say it was a dirty hit, but I do know that Matt Dumba is one of those players who, I mean, I don't know if he's necessarily, like, super dirty, but he is very physical out there, and he will definitely walk the line of what's a clean hit and what isn't. I think back to last year, rookie or Lucas Raymond's rookie year, I remember D Matt Dumba laid a hit on him, and then he was basically lying down on Lucas Raymond on the ice, punching him in the face, so... Just based on that alone, I'm not going to give Matt Dumbin the benefit of the doubt because I hate his guts, and I have reason to hate his guts. Plus, I'm rooting for the Stars in this series, so yeah, I'll ride with my Stars players. I hate Matt Dumba and the Minnesota Wild now, but I I think just upon watching it back five or six times, it, it looks like a clean hit to me with a bad result. Derek, you want to add on to it a little bit? See, I think I'm more biased just because I like Pavelski. He's always been that. He's an older player. Not really old, but older player too. now who's always been a hard-hitting, beat the crap out of somebody and still scores goals. And the fact that he got laid out like that, I was just like, that doesn't look right. At the same time, you also <laughs> see the fact that it was late, like you said. That was the biggest indicator in the yeah. whole thing. It was a late hit, so of course Pavelski probably got his guard down after getting rid of the puck. There is a certain allocated amount of time you're allowed to go in to hit somebody still after they left the puck, but Doma definitely went past that time. I mean, it's, you know, split seconds there, but at the same time, you definitely know he got rid of the puck. You don't need to go in to hit somebody like that. And like Matt said, it did look like he caught him up high, so it looked like something to do with his face. It's got flipped around. It was an aggressive hit, definitely. Not the... I mean, he had the puck, I wouldn't say anything about it. Because, yep, he just got destroyed. The league won't do anything. He might have got a two-minute penalty for, you know, raising his arms for a roughing call or something like that. But he got rid of the puck too early, and that might just be the fact that he has to uh, set out for a game because of that now. Not too sure, though. Yeah, if someone knows the news on that, please let us know in the comments. I did not take the liberty of uh, looking that up when I wrote this down. So do my job for me i would appreciate that uh so let's go ahead and talk about the tampa and toronto game let's go ahead and talk about leslie's favorite player michael bunting who continues with his on ice antics by taking or not taking a hit but giving a hit to eric chernak's head uh he did have a hearing today for the illegal hit uh, i stopped there and i was going to ask you guys your thoughts because i wanted to see what you guys thought the suspension was going to be for it and turns out he got three games. Is that fair? I'll start. Yeah, more than fair. Honestly, this guy, he, I saw a video today. They're comparing him to Nazem Kadri. Honestly, you can compare it to whoever you want. It doesn't matter. His on ice antics are just, he, it's just a major liability at this point. He just spews childish, like, just the way he is as a person, it's just really bad. 
It's beer league antics. He just doesn't need to be doing the stuff that he does. There's no reason for it. And I don't know if it's because he's on a Toronto Maple Leafs team that's stacked with full of really special players. Matthews, Marner, Tavares, Mylander. Does he also think that he's just as special as they are? No. He literally would be no one. And he was before he got on that team. He would be no one on someone else's team as well. He'd probably be a bottom six player. Probably be on the PK or something. And would be still doing the same exact thing. So, yeah, I think three games is fine. I don't see anything wrong with it. He nailed the head off that player, Eric Chernak. Like, it was bad. And there, it was just really uncalled for. And then just the after effect of him just being like, what did I do? What did I do? You saw it up there, my dude. Guys, help me out here. Let's let Derek go first, Leslie. He, his will probably be a little shorter. I will just say, I feel like Leslie might have a rant here because uh, he told us yeah. that he does. But You're right. it was ridiculous to watch that hit. It's like the guy has such a horrible track record. You said it for yourself, Zach. You're right on point. It was He's a ridiculous player who shouldn't be doing what he's doing. He doesn't have the skill set to get away what he's doing with. Just in general, you shouldn't get away with it. But, you know, we all know certain players do get away with that bull crap. But he is just a nobody who's trying to flaunt his status on a good team that's going to kick that, get kicked out in the first round again. Calling it again. Yeah. Yeah. Leslie, give no, it to 100%. us. 100%. I agree. See, Michael Bunting to me is just that type of player who tries to play the role of instigator and be a pest out there. You know, he tries to model his game after like the Marshans, the Kachuk brothers. You could even throw in Bertuzzi there. He strikes me as that kind of guy who he looks at this Toronto Maple Leafs team and the roster, and who knows, maybe he's even talked to the coach and said, hey, we need a guy who can score goals and go out there and be a pest. The problem with Michael Bunting is he does not know how to get away with it. So when you're out there and you're being a pest and you're trying to play that mold of the tough guy, goal scorer, going to go punch you in the face after scoring – you have to kind of know what you can get away with and what's going to hurt yourself and the team. And Michael Bunting does not know how to do that. He does not know how to be a Brad Marchand, which let me tell you something. You know what happens when Brad Marchand will go out there and, you know, jab someone with a stick or lick them in the face? You know what he does after that? He smiles and laughs because he knows he can get away with it because he does this all the time. And Michael Bunting complaining about whatever call happens to the refs does not help his case whatsoever. And right. I don't know who it was who was comparing him to Nazem Kadri. That could not be more off. Nazem Kadri knows exactly what he has to do to have a negative impact on the other team and stay out of the box. Michael Bunting doesn't. He has no clue. I think a three-game suspension... It's one more than I would have given him, but yeah, for that hit, there's no excuse for that type of hit. I mean, it was completely uncalled for. It was extremely unnecessary. I, I don't understand what he was thinking there. Like, sure, you want to go out there. It's the Stanley Cup playoffs. You got to play with a little bit more grit, a little more edge. You can play with a little more edge and also not headshot someone. Those two things can exist at the same time. So... I don't know. That guy's a massive liability out there. I know he's free agent this summer. Um, if I'm an NHL GM, I don't care how much I need toughness. I'm not touching him with a 10-foot pole. He is a complete and total liability out there. And like you said, Zach, I think a lot of his scoring touch comes from playing with elite players like Marner, uh, Tavares, Matthews, whoever he's playing with on a given night. Yeah, he's one of those guys who elevates his game. And in any of the other 31 teams, he's a bottom six player at best. So, yeah, I, I think this three-game suspension is kind of just the NHL in general, like, kind of calling him out on the shit and just being like, listen, we're not going to tolerate this anymore. If this doesn't get you to stop, nothing will. Yeah, so I'm going to cook on him a little bit here. So, yeah, he's 27 years old. I mean, he this is technically his, I guess if you want to say his third, I mean, he played five games in 18-19 with the Yotes, didn't play the following year. Then in 2021, he played 21 games, got 13 points with Arizona. Then he just gets signed or traded to Toronto, whatever one it was. And then he gets 
63 points, 79 games out of nowhere. And then, like, all the Toronto fans were like, yeah, he's so good, blah, blah, blah. You can't tell me that he wouldn't have done that with Arizona. No, he wouldn't have. He's an overager, and he's having a down year even this year. He's got 49 points in 82 games. So before the sussy, he was playing top line left left side between Matthews and Marner. Like, I, like this guy is like, it's he's a joke at this point. Like he literally is, he's the meme of the NHL right now, and it's not a good look to that franchise whatsoever. And when I brought up the Nazem Kadri thing, the video that I watched it was from Lego Rocks ninety nine on YouTube, and then um. Gavitron, I think is his name. I can't remember his YouTube name. I'm so sorry, but I'll tag him in the description as well. And they were the ones who pointed out how Nazem Kadri, when he signed his long-term contract with the Maple Leafs, that he was kind of doing the same thing with the refs. You know, it wasn't to the same level that Bunting's doing it, but yeah, that caused a lot of issue with the issues with Kadri in that fan base. So this is, it's, what goes around comes around. It's coming right back to that franchise. And yeah, he's a UFA at the end of this year. And I will be shocked if they sign him. I will be shocked. He's done nothing but cause them issues. And now they're losing their, like I said to Leslie in the chat, and Leslie made a good point that there's a difference between fi- being physical and then being a complete idiot out there and knocking people's heads off. But he is one of the only guys on that team who is physical. So that's a big loss to them in a way. But now they don't have to deal with the refs as much. No one's complaining to them. So hopefully that helps them out. But to me, I mean, I, I selected them to win in seven games. But it's a first-round knockout for me at this point. I mean, their goaltending looked bad. I mean, they looked decent at the start of the second period. But 7-3, to three, that's – it. it's like the last three years that they've, you know, been knocked out in the first round. There's There's nothing different about it. So you Toronto fans, hope you're ready for the off season because uh, the trade rumors are going to be swirling. Real, we bad. sure are, and they probably already are. I mean, yeah. if you guys don't so, want Matthews anymore, we will take him. Don't worry. Yeah, I mean, we'll, a very we'll talk about you know cut in the salary. Yeah, Shit, we'll, I'll we'll take... talk about trade scenarios in later episodes. So I'll take Marner. I'll take Nylander. Yeah. Hell, I'll even take Morgan Riley. Whatever you guys want to give us, we'll give you Sherratt for him. How about that? Sherratt straight up for whoever we want. And you'll have to take it because Dubas will be gone. You will have exited the first round for the, what is it, like 65,000th time in a row? I'm not even counting anymore at this point. <laughs> like I, I, I do want to say that tomorrow I think they'll bounce back. A 7-3 game, that is a horrible way to start in the playoffs. You have to hit the ground running in the playoffs or... I mean, I guess we see what, what has happened the past however long that they've not performed, but I think they'll bounce back. I still am sticking with my original prediction of Tampa and seven. It could even be six. I mean, this is definitely, if I'm a Leafs fan, I'm very worried, and I guess I'm just feeling the same emotions I felt for my whole life, so I don't know. All right, well, let's end it there on the Toronto Talk. We are a Red Wings podcast after all. So let's go ahead and move on to the main topic of today's episode, which is grading the forwards this year amongst the Red Wings. Like I said, uh, was a minimum of 10 games played. So you won't see players like Simon Evanson and some of the other players that were called up due to injury reasons like Giovanni Smith, who eventually got traded. We're also not doing players that were traded. So no Bertuzzi, no Hironic, no Verana in this exercise. So let's go ahead and kick it off. We did, I, well, I did, I did a Wheel of Fortune thing uh, during my off time. At, yeah, so I, I did that, you and uh, Derek was lucky enough to get the fir- Derek was lucky enough to get the first spin, and he got some um, PS Sutar. Alrighty, boys, and I start. I'll start with the why giving them grade before I give you actual grades. So with PS Suter, obviously we all know tears with the Red Wings one year with the Hawk on drafted free agent after leaving the OHL has not done too much that really mind blows us in the OHL or even in the NHL so far. As my lovely friends have stated before, that he has not played a full season in the NHL so far with his career, but. Unfortunately, at the same time, I don't think that really has anything to do with it. I just don't think he is being the player that we really expected him to be, the high score point guy that we needed, especially for a second line center slash wing. 
really was hoping for more from him this year. So my overall rating for Suter would be a D plus still. Oh my God. Uh, Jared, wrong. He did play a full season last season. So I'm going to call you out there. But uh, anyways, on that. <laughs> I thought he did. You got me all flipped around. You are still looking at Fabry, you motherfucker. Uh, you guys don't know this, but I edited this and I accidentally started talking about Fabry. And so Derek got stuck on Fabry as well. But we'll talk about Fabry <sighs> next since that's my guy. So the rules of this exercise is basically Derek will have a list of players that he's going to talk about. And then Leslie and I will pitch in to say our grades. <laughs> with a sentence or two afterwards. So for me with PS Tudor, down year from last year, he had more of a role last year, so that could possibly be why. But for a guy that we originally signed to be the 2 seat when we had a worse team, um, 14 goals, 10 assists this year in 79 games. He was only a minus three. That's not really too bad. Um, I, got, I, I really was expecting more, though, so I'll... I'll give him a C. See, this is sounding minus. better now. C minus. My Thank God, you. you guys are really going hard at this, dude. And I'm going to tell you guys exactly why I think you're wrong. I remember in, like, that whole February stretch where they were on their West Coast road trip, this dude had, like, I don't even know, a four or five game stretch where he looked like Nathan McKinnon. Like, he was literally the best player during that stretch. I don't know if you remember that. I know that was a long while ago, but he was, like, literally the only guy showing up. So, yeah. I think he's a great two-way forward. Uh, you know, 24 yeah. points, that's a little bit down from what he can do. Um, I think you can re-sign him, and you don't have to pay him that much. Maybe sell for $3 million, two seven five two eight. Um, I I still struggle to think if we should re-sign him, because that seems like a perfect role for Marco Casper to play next year, if he can make the team and just kind of be sheltered a little bit and learn the NHL game. But overall, I'd have to give Pew Suter a B. I'm going to give him B. And I also want to give you this other anecdote. In the two games that we played against Connor McDavid, he shut him down. He shut the dude down. If you don't believe me, you can look up the highlight tape. I mean, he literally, he was like Philip Deneau against him. So, yeah, you guys are way down on this guy. I would love to re-sign him. It it definitely wasn't an act on this. It It wasn't a knack on his play. I mean, the whole down season and the fact that well, you're right. You could have Marco Casper come up. Um, but I think Joe Valeno, at the end of the day, really pushed Pia Suter out of his role. I mean, Pia Suter was being the fourth line center for majority of the year. So could we resign him? Yeah, I think that would be great. But I don't think that we're resigning him to be a center. I think we already have too many players that can fill that role. You probably won't be center, yeah. We, uh, Good two way winger. I, I, but I guess I wouldn't be surprised if he was the fourth line center again. If you can sign him, great. I think you're better off with sticking with familiarity, but I'm not going to sign him longer than, let's be honest, I don't think I'm going to sign him more than a year, um, especially if you have Casper, Valeno, Larkin. Maybe somehow you get Connor Bedard or Adam Fantilli. So see you, Suter. All right, so <laughs> let's move on. Let's move on to the next person. So let's talk about my boy, Robbie Fabry, and let me get him pulled up. But, yeah, this guy, he... Injury season again. 28 games, 16 points, 7 goals, 9 assists. Um, last season, he played in 56 games, so if you doubled this season, he would technically have two more points than he did the previous season, which he finished 56 games, 30 points. Yeah, this guy just cannot stay injured. He, he had no, he some good moments, but... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he just stays injured, and, uh, you know, and it was fun when Eiserman traded for him for De La Rose, basically next for nothing, and, you know, the hope for me was is that, you know, maybe this was the year where he can have closer to a full season of play, much like he did in his first season with St. Louis at 72 games. Even then, he only put up 37 points, but I do believe had he not gotten injured, he probably would be a consistent 50-point guy, and I think that's what I was expecting out of him this year. But because of the injury, 16 points in 28 games isn't that bad. So um, I'll stick what I said originally before I edited the video, and I'll stick with um, B, B minus, C, no, C, C plus. Oh, I'm my sorry. God, Dad. I'm jumping around. Go ahead. All right, someone. I mean, give a short little spiel back out, you guys. I would agree if as long as he wouldn't. 
injured for a majority of the season. I would love to see him actually play open because I could see him be that 50, 60 point goal point scorer that we actually need on the team as like a second liner. But he just can't. He's just injury prone and it's just hurting the team a little bit. But like he said, he had a good season for what he played and he's not a bad player in general. So I'll give him a solid B minus. I think with a guy like Fabry, like he just can't stay healthy. But like when he is healthy, he does produce at a pretty decent clip. I I don't think at this point we'll ever see what he can do over a full season because I don't think he will ever play a full season. I do have a little bit of renewed confidence in him because I did see a quote from him, and I don't I think it might have been during like the end of season media interviews that he's now for I think the first time in his career going into a whole off season completely healthy. Maybe he could play a full season next year. Maybe he can have a good training camp. I don't know. Um, Gets injured in training just... camp. <laughs> Wait, what? I'm just that. kidding. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, yeah. I didn't hear what you said, but um, good. I don't know. See, like I don't know what to say about him. I I just I really wish he could stay healthy because I think he could be really good for us. Great, and I guess that leads to me. Uh, I'm going to start off with everybody's favorite prospect. I guess he's not a prospect anymore, but our favorite uh, six overall pick, because we've had a lot of them, Philip Zadina. Played 30 games this year. Three goals, four assists, seven points. God damn. I, I'm giving him, like, next year. If he can have a full season next year, and he's the same as he was this year, maybe a little better, uh, I'm cutting the cord on him, you know? I, I guess I'd have to give him a D because we thought he'd be that 30, 40 goal scorer. I don't even wow. I don't even know if he's going to be a 20 goal scorer. So D. Derek, I'll let you go. That was a little painful there. I mean, especially coming after his draft day, wasn't he the one who said to Ottawa, I'd love to put some pucks in the back of that net? Pretty much where all the that? teams that passed on him, he said that, yeah. Like, where, where, where's that? Where's that? Like, I was excited. I'm like, ooh, I love that smack talk coming from a child that early. No production. I mean, how many games has he played this year? Was it like 40 30. something? Oh, 30? 30. In what, seven points? Mm-hmm. Pretty upsetting, if you ask me. Like, I'm, it's been a couple years now, buddy. We were hoping you start doing something with it. You know, this rate. Just from what I was expecting for what we are getting right now, D minus. Part it, you know, this is the guy that I had full faith in ever since he got drafted. I mean, I even have his jersey. I was the guy. I know that there was a lot of doubters about him. There's still plenty of doubters about him. Um, I, I mean, the numbers don't lie, but you you look at him when he plays. You can see that it's there. It's just like. Like, if it were a couple inches more that way, it would have gone in the net, you know? And he just, he's just got such bad puck luck. Like, I truly do feel bad for him. But, like I said, the numbers don't lie. I mean, last year in 74 games, he put up 24 points. He played 30 games this year. If he doubled that 60 games, he'd have 14 points. So, technically, he's gone down. So, Oh boy, I hate to give this to him. Um, yeah, I I think I I guess I'm just gonna give him a solid D because he didn't do anything really to insert himself in the lineup like he should have. So I mean, the future is very unknown with him. Um, yeah. So I'll leave it at that. I guess that's pretty much what I got. I I think it's a D. I think that's the consensus, right? D's all around. Yeah, they were got a D minus. Yeah, yeah, I'm a little more mean. All right, Derek. Let's go ahead and hear about Jonathan Berggren. Jonathan Berggren. Let's go, boys. A child's prodigy we got right here. Not really prodigy, but, you know, 22-year-old. Not doing too bad. Uh, I mean, he's been close to a point per game in the AHL. Not NHL. I wish. The AHL right now playing for the Griffins. So he's not been doing too bad. And he's also our third-line wiener. So I think he's doing pretty well. I can't remember. I actually have it pulled up here. What are his stats? Ignore me while I pull that up. I mean, yeah, I mean, towards the end of the season, he was playing fourth line, but he was moving anywhere from second, third to fourth line. You're right. 
And yeah, in 67 games, he's put up 28 points, and we, this is his first year in the NHL playing, so he hasn't played, he didn't, well, I believe, starting November, I think, with us. So not a bad time to start up, not the beginning of the season, not the end, right the, towards the start of the season. So it gives you a little more leeway to be able to acclimate yourself a little bit better. He did great in Grand Rapids, of course, 64 last year. He had seven points this year in seven games. He's doing really well on that end, so I feel like we just got to slowly weed him into the system up here, and I think he'll do start doing a lot better. So my overall grade for him on this one is a solid B. Yeah, um, this is a player who didn't make the roster out of camp. Um, he, I can't remember if he broke onto the roster because of his stellar play in Grand Rapids or if it was because due to an injury, but granted... You know, last season he put up 64 points in 70 games with the Grand Rapids Griffins, so a lot of fans thought that he should have made the opening night roster to begin with because of that play. Um, yeah, in 67 games, 28 points. I think that's a win for him. Um, I thought he was great, especially when we called him up. I mean, he was on fire. Um, he slowed down a little bit, but that happens with players once they enter the NHL and they continuously play. I mean, that's the most he's ever played in the NHL. And, you know, like when he played in Grand Rapids last year, 70 games, that's the most he's ever played in this season before. So this is all new to him uh, year after year. So in the last three years, he's been in three different leagues. So I'll give him, yeah, I, I think what Derek said is is a good grade. I'll give him a B, maybe even a B plus, only because I think that, that granted, the numbers aren't as high as what you expected, but he got 15 goals. So I'll take that as a dub. I think that's a B plus. Yanni Burgers to me, like when he came in, I think, yeah, like he's got good production, 28 points in 67 games. If he played a full 82 game season, who knows? He could be up near the 40 point mark. To me, his intangibles are some of the best I've seen in any prospect we've ever seen. That dude is so, so smart. He is such a smart hockey player. He thinks the game on a different level than. Honestly, a lot of people on this roster, which I guess says a lot about the current Red Wings right now. But, yeah, he's a really good player. I expect a lot from him in his career in the future. I really think he could be, like, the next Gustav Nyquist for us. Maybe even a little bit better than that. I'm going to give him an A. I am really high on Jonathan Berger, or Yanni Burgers, excuse me. He's Swedish. You have to say it like a Y. Um... Yeah, I'm very high on this guy. I I really expect a lot of good things from him in the future. Yeah, no, I agree with you 100%. Um, And A, okay, I'll take it. I think he would too, if he knew who you were. Start listening to us, Yanni. He knows me. He knows me. (laughs) Let's go ahead and move on to my next player. Let's talk about Joe Swoleno. Joe Valeno, 23 years old, uh, left-handed shooting centerman. Really good. Uh, he's trying to be an overall 200-foot player. He's really good down the two-way, and he's starting to find his uh, his stride, honestly, towards the end of the season. I mean, you go, you boys can attest to this with me that it seemed like every game that I was watching, I was, like, texting something about Joe Valeno. I was like, look at what he just did. The last couple episodes, I feel like I've talked about him uh, pretty fre- frequently, too, as well. In 81 games, he put up 20 points. While those numbers don't really jump up as well, he still did better than the previous year when he got the 66 games and 15 points. I believe Joe Valeno was another player who didn't technically make the opening night roster. I could be wrong. Obviously, it was no, he did. a long time ago. So. Okay. All right. He did. Thanks for correcting me, probably. Okay, cool. So, yeah, I mean, for someone who came in for possible third-line duties and majority fourth-line duties, 20 points in 81 games – that's literally PS Suter numbers. So yeah, I, for Joe Valeno, I think he took massive strides, and especially towards the end of the season, uh, trying to show that his offense is still there. And his last ten games, he put up four points, and I think that's great for him. Like I said, he's still young; he's still got a lot to learn, and hopefully, he can uh, figure it out and stick around with the Red Wings for a long time as a great three C. You know, with Marco Casper making the jump, so. I'll give him. I'll give him a B minus. I think that's fair. You know, Joe Valeno to me is one of those guys who almost kind of suffers from the Philip Zadina syndrome. I feel like he should put up a lot more points than he actually does. 
he makes all the right moves when he's out on the ice. He's a very good 200 foot player. Um, I really feel like his potential in the NHL at like his peak is anywhere from 40 to 50 points as a three C, maybe even a, a high end four C. I do really like what I've seen from him. I can't lie. Uh, 20 points is less than I thought he would get this year. It's, it's a full season for him, but you know, at the same time, he's still young. I think he's only 22 years old right now. Some players just take a while to reach their ceiling. You know, maybe he's a slow cooker. Maybe he's like a Troy Terry who Troy Terry didn't look like he was anything until he was something. So I don't know for now. I I'd have to give him, I think I'll agree with you, Zach, a B minus, but I really think he could blossom into a, a pretty solid depth center for us. Yeah, 100%. I think so, too. Uh, Derek? Yeah, I agree with both of you on this one. Like, I feel like he's that secret player that's like low and laying low right now, but he will eventually hit that stride like in a year or two when he just kind of just blows up out of nowhere. We're going to go see him from like a 30-point season all of a sudden hit like a 60, a 70-point season. Like, we just need him to hit that sweet spot. He's young still, so he has time to learn. So I'm right with you guys on it right now. I'm going to give a B minus hoping for like an A coming up in the next two years. All right. Yeah. Now I guess uh, to add on to Joe Valeno. Sorry. sorry, Hold on. To add on to Joe Valeno. He also did. He also did get PK minutes and then sometimes he was getting power play minutes as well. So he is making strides. So it is there. So like Derek said, yeah, I think in a year or two and then him going to worlds will help him out a little bit more. I'm sorry, Leslie, go ahead and talk to your boy. The one who shares the same name as you. Don't skip on him this time. Yeah, I mean, Matt Luff played 19 games. Uh, if you blinked, you would have missed it. Uh, he had four points in 19 games. He was signed to be on the Grand Rapids Griffins. It was not ever intended for him to step foot in the NHL. Yet he had to because of injuries. I think he was okay in the fill-in for injuries. Um, if we're grading at the AHL level, he's almost a point per game in the AHL. So I give him an A down there. Um, if we're holding him to the standard of an NHL player, I'll give him an F minus, 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 <laughs> minus, minus. Yeah. I mean, he's not an NHLer. Uh, that was Matt Luff. Yeah, I'll just, I have to go along with you. 19 games. I, I honestly did not know who he was until he ran me fluffed up on a Red Wings team on a lineup one day, and I was like, who the hell is Matt Fluff? I was like, oh, Grand Rapids <laughs> Griffins? Okay, not doing too bad, but it's like, I, can you play up here? No, no, not really. I'm not as mean, I guess, with Leslie on this one. I'll give him a D minus. Uh, can you go, can I give an E? Do we give E's out in school anymore? You can give an F plus. Ah, you know what? Sure, I'll give him an F plus. Not F minus. He's minus, got a minus, plus. Minus. So, so for me, four points in nineteen games. Yeah, assigned to basically just be a depth guy for call ups. Start on the AHL. You know, we'll call you up when we need you. Uh basically be the thirteenth forward too, majority of the time. Um, I really don't want to give anyone Fs, but. Uh, F plus. I mean, I, I I can't give him an F because at least he scored two goals, so I, I'll give him a, a D minus. That's fair. <laughs> but, look, if four I points mean, in 19 like, games, at least he didn't get no points. That's better than nothing. Like he was buddy, so I'm pretty sure we could score two point two goals in 14 games out there if they put us in the right spot. So Yeah, not I a chance. Know. Maybe if I'm playing with McDavid. I mean, like <laughs> he's he's a good he's a good griffin. Like I think he's a, a solid a- AHLer, and hopefully he has, you know, a big role next year. I think he can help out the Grand Rapids Griffins. Me saying F minus is not like saying like this dude should have never put on a pair of skates or held a stick. Like he's not an NHLer, and he was not signed to be an NHLer. If we're holding him to the NHL standards, what other grade do I have? F-plus. I mean, I can't argue it at all. Yeah. I guess F plus. All I'm right, gonna stick with F minus for that right. too. <laughs> All but right, I mean, Derek, go ahead with Austin Zarnick. I was about to say this is a great lead into this guy too. <laughs> My 30 year old AHL player. Let's go, baby. God, just keep him there until retirement at 35. Give him like the basic level contract. Like the guy looks great in every AHL level team he's played on over the last 10 years. But you put him in the NHL, 
it's just a shit show. Like, oh god, like what was it going for? Like, I'm pretty sure, like in Grand Rapids, Griffin, 37 points in 43 games this year, five points in 29 games with Detroit. Like, no, New York Islanders, freaking Leslie's babies over there. In two they years, suck. he played 15 games, got five points in two years, but 37 points in 38 games with the Highlanders AHL team. Like. You just go back into history for the AHL guy. It's beautiful. But if you look at him playing for any team, Boston, Islanders, I think he might have played for Calgary at some point. No, I lied. That's a different player. You did, no, no he, he, did. he played for Calgary. Two years. It's even worse. 54 games, 18 points. Oh, my God. This that's man. actually not bad. That's not I bad, think, though. I think that might have been his best, yeah. actually. Yeah, that's honestly not bad. You, yeah, you. You want around the twenty point mark for your fourth line player, so that's serviceable. Yeah. But you got to remember that was also in twenty eighteen nineteen, so four or five years ago. Yeah. So he was twenty five, twenty six years old. Uh, Derek, what's your grade on him? Oh man, just because of I honestly believe he's somebody we should keep in the AHL as like a kind of like a prawn of kind of like an old guy leader because he does so well down there. But in general, he's just, like Leslie said, we're trying to do standards of the NHL. Straight up D. Nothing higher, nothing lower. He just, I want to keep him as a support role, but nothing more. He shouldn't be up in the NHL anymore. Yeah, he technically did worse than Matt Luff, so I'm going to stick with a D- minus as well. You know, honestly, like, last summer when we were doing all the free agent signings and I saw we signed Zarnik. I just, like, for some reason, like, with some players, I have, like, one good season in the NHL of them ingrained into my brain, and I only know him for being in Calgary and scoring all those points. And I was like, oh, that's a pretty good depth signing. Maybe he'll be a good fourth liner. He's a career AHLer. He's actually really good in Grand Rapids. Uh, Yeah, five points in 29 games. I'm going to have to stick with F- minus because, I mean, I did it for Luff. It would be kind of mean if I did anything higher for Zarnik. They're pretty much the exact same player. Good guy you want to fill in for an injury for ideally five games, not 29 games like he did. But, okay, yeah, okay, he, he did play in the NHL at some point this season. F-. minus. <laughs> Minus, I like it. Okay, let's go ahead and move over to our captain, Dylan Larkin. I have the uh, uh, prestigiousness of uh, speaking on his behalf. The captain, oh, captain, my captain, 26 years old, Waterford, Michigan native, uh, 2014 round one, 15th overall by the Detroit Red Wings. Just signed that lucrative deal this year. Um, Good for him. That was the player that I really wanted to see him get a payday. Um. It's hard not to give Dylan Larkin an A. I'm just going to put my grade out there right now. I mean, he's always been the best player on this team for the last four years. Ever since Zetterberg and Datsuk left. 79 points in 80 games, 32 goals, and 47 assists. Um, I That's right around where I wanted him. I wanted him to be a point-per-game guy. He plays power play. He plays PK. He plays 19 to 21 minutes a night. He does it all for this team. He is the best player on this team. In and out. Night in, night out. Um, and hey. Whoever wants to go next, don't jump the gun, guys. Come on. We all just sit here. A plus 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 for Larkin. I mean That's it. That's all I have. There really isn't much to say. He's our best player on the team. It's an A plus. Like we all know he could do so much more, but he has what he has, and he's still producing a point per game like we wanted him to do in like the first episodes. We asked him to do a point per game, and all of a sudden like, he started becoming a point per game player. Hey, and hey, now we have Andrew Kopp up next. Uh, yeah, nine goals, thirty four assists for forty three points this year. Um, it's kind. I I think that's like what you can expect for Andrew Kopp, but. He signed at just over five and a half million for five seasons. I think with that kind of contract, you ideally like to see those numbers bump up a little bit, maybe even be closer to the sixty point mark. Um, I I think with Andrew Cop, we're getting from him exactly what we thought we would. 
Uh, I, it's actually probably even a little less because he did have off-season surgery on, I think it was one of his core muscles. So that mm-hmm. does take a while to come back from. I think he'll be better next year, but I don't really know what better looks like. Maybe it's like 15 goals, 35 assists. I have no idea. Like He's a good two-way center. He's good at winning face-offs. I mean, his intangibles are kind of a big part of what got him that money, but um, I don't know. I, I think when more talent gets on this roster, by the end of that contract, you could see him playing third center, maybe even third line winger. Um, I, I, I'm okay with him, I guess. I, I'll give him a B. Like, that contract is what it is. Uh, you probably won't live up to it, but I think when you're asking for that kind of money, you kind of owe it to the team to live up to that, but it is what it is. I'll give him a B. Yeah, he said in his media, uh, end of season media outlet presser, he, the question was asked, you know, did you have to sacrifice your offense to be more defensive minded? You know, I, you're right, Leslie, the, the injury and everything to start off the season. I mean, he's put up 20 goals before he did it last season between the Jets and the Rangers for 21. I uh, finished with 53 points. I think this is a player who can be a 50 to 60 point guy consistently for the wings in the years to come. If he stays healthy, he finished with 82 games, 42 points. So I'll give him. Yeah. I mean, just going off of everything that you said, Leslie, I agree with you. Um, A C plus granted he had the injury. I think the goals were a little bit low. I would have liked 15 goals minimum. So yeah, that's what I'm going to give him. Uh, let's go at five and a half. I uh, like his, like Leslie, you're saying his core antics, like his little things he does that the team really needs. He does them well. And that's probably why he got the payment he is getting right now. But at the same time, we need him to produce more if he's going to get paid that much. Like we need some more goals. We need at least 50 points this season. We need 60 next season. Obviously it didn't happen. So I'm hoping that it reverts to 50 next season and 60 the season before after that. So, just in general, I just go with a C on that one. Just until he starts getting a little bit better, I give him as a flat C. Derek got his favorite player, Daddy P. I did get Daddy P. Of course I put Daddy P's name in here. So, of course, Perron, the old balls of the team, 34 years young with two kids now. Love him. He's been, honestly, his entire career, he's been just an average player. Like, above, I guess above average, I would say, over a point every other game still. Probably a point every two out of three games. He's doing pretty well this year. Doing great. I think he's, what, at 56 points for maybe 82 games. I think he played a full season this year. And for a 34-year-old, that's pretty dang good. I'm like I'll accept that, and he's the kind of guy that we needed for the team. We had a young team with no one with any kind of playoff experience or leadership, and Perron brought that into the locker room. Like he's been to the playoffs more times than anybody on the team will ever probably see. He's been there what eight times with St. Louis, won a cup with them. He has the experience that we need, the leadership skills. Overall, I gave him a B plus just because obviously he did great this season with us as the assistant captain and i'm hoping that he just keeps uh punching us down and making these little kids learn what they have to do out there yeah you brought him on to uh kind of show raymond and uh show him the ropes and uh give him a little competition for that top spot there's nothing wrong with healthy competition he's hard to get off the puck uh he's great at passing great at shooting he got the 20 goals like we wanted or at least what i wanted I think 56 points in 82 games for a 34-year-old is pretty damn good. So um, with everything that I said and what you said, Derek, it went better than honestly what I expected. So I'll give him an A-. minus. Acceptable. Yeah, I I, I think David, David Prawn, um, he was brought in for some veteran leadership, and he's provided that. Uh you know, he had 56 points this year, which is pretty much where he's hovered around his entire career. So we got pretty much what we wanted out of him. He's a good power play winger. He played some minutes on the first line, which I think is a line or two above where he should be. But 
that was kind of under unideal circumstances anyways. So, yeah, we, we got pretty much exactly what I thought we'd get out of him, uh, B+. Plus. That's a good. Those are some good grades for Daddy P. We love Daddy P on this show. Clearly, love me some Daddy. We P. should get shirts for him. <laughs> <laughs> Up next is our uh, young boy, the Sweden Lucas Raymond. Well, the other young Sweden, I guess. <clears throat> Lucas Raymond, twenty-one years old, uh, former twenty twenty first round fourth overall draft pick for the Red Wings. Y'all know about him. Um, down year, sophomore slump. It's expected. Uh, I, I I was someone entering the season who thought he could keep the point pace the same as he did last season, calling that his sophomore slump. That didn't work out the way that I thought it would. Um, he had his moments, but there were plenty of moments where it gave me Johan Franzen vibes, where he was just consistent a little bit, but then went really inconsistent um, as time went on. Um, he was injured for a little bit due to a Ben Sherat hit. Missed eight games. Thanks, Sherat. <sighs> so helpful. Like I said, I don't. I, I didn't have super high expectations on him going into the season because the sophomore slump is not kind to many young players. So, forty-five points. I mean, that put him. He he still finished top five in the Red Wings for for point getters. I'm pretty That's sure. That's so sad. So I hear. Don't he say that out loud. Tied with Dominic Kubalik for third. So, um, nonetheless, though, uh, Raymond definitely has a lot of work he needs to do. He needs to put on some weight this summer. Um, but he did a lot of good things, too. You know, he was, you know, just trying to soak it all in as best as he could. So that way he can pre- prepare for next season. He's going into the world championships, too. Um, but other than that, I'm going to give him C+. Plus. He passed, barely. <laughs> I mean, you can't give him much more than that right now. It's his second year in the league, and he's a young player with a lot to learn, like you said. You're not wrong at all. Like, I, agree, I completely agree with you, Zach, honestly. So, I, I be, keep it short and sweet. Yeah, I give him a B- minus on this one just because I do expect a lot from him in the next coming years. But, obviously, sophomore slump. Can't do too much about it. You got to get through what you have to get through, and hopefully he comes back stronger next year after the World Championship. Yep. Yeah, I get it with players like this. It, you can't really judge them too harshly. Sophomore slumps happen to pretty much anyone, no matter who you are. Um, I, I think he's going to bounce back next year. He does. He definitely needs to work on putting on a lot more mass, a lot more size. And I think one of the biggest things is he just needs to use his shot more. Like when we see this guy, when we see this guy play, and he wants to shoot the puck, more often than not, it goes in the net. Like he has a really good shot. And yeah, he missed about eight games this year. I think if he had a full season, he still could have got around 50 points, which that's still down from last year, but that's not bad. Yeah, I I think when Lucas Raymond hits his prime, I think he's going to be an 80 to 90 point guy. So this year, I'm hoping it's an outlier, and I think it will be. I'll give him a, a solid C for this year. It's below what we think it should be, but I think he has a lot more to prove. And that brings us on to, uh, who else do I have? Um, Dominic Kubelik. Very nice. So Dominic Kubelik, released from Chicago last year. 20 goals, 25 assists. That's not bad. I mean, he's not making that much money. But next year, he's going to be making $2.5 million, which is, I believe it's the last year in his contract. I like him as a depth winger. Um, he's definitely inconsistent as a scorer, but that's kind of the reason that Chicago let him go, I guess. Uh, when his contract is up, I'd rather have him be replaced by one of Mazur or Lombardi or I guess whoever is ready to take over that role. But for now, I, I like what he brings to the team. Um, he's, he's a decent power play winger. He's definitely not one of the better ones in the league, but I think I'll, I'll give him a B, I'll give him a solid B. How about that? How about them apples? I'll take them apples. I mean, I agree with you, Leslie. I, I see him as kind of like a pie of suitor a little bit in that realm where it's like, okay, once he's contracts up, we should probably be looking for somebody to replace him pretty quickly. Obviously, definitely hit a lot better on the point area than Suter did this year, which 
I can see us getting a little bit of a return in that aspect instead of just having to drop somebody like Suter that we could actually trade them off. So I'll give them like the C plus range on that area for them on the, just because I'm hopefully not. There's a potential to do something more on that end. This is a guy in his first uh, season in the league with the Blackhawks in 2019-20. He put up 30 goals, 16 assists, 46 points in 68 games with a Patrick Kane and John, uh, Jonathan Taves. Uh, you fast forward to this season, his first season with the Wings, 20 goals, 25 assists, 45 points, 81 games played. So he missed one game. I can't remember exactly what it was for. But, yeah, this is a guy that you brought in that you hoped he could um, bounce back and uh, prove to not only himself but people in the league that he still belongs in this league. I mean, the season before with Chicago, in 78 games, he put up 15 goals, 17 assists, uh, 32 points. So he definitely rebounded. I love that. Um I will say that I did expect at least 20 goals from him, so he met my minimum mark. Um, Yeah, this is a guy that I expect to be traded next year. Hopefully he can do a little bit better, maybe get 25 goals. So I'll say for this year, a B. It went good. It went well. Good free agent signing. Yeah, cheap contract too. Can't say no cheap. Derek. Derek. Give us the correct solder Blom, not the Chicago goalie one, but his brother yeah. with the Red Wings. As I got a little confused earlier from messaging Zach why I was looking up some goalie for this, and I was like, I swear, I, there's a solder Blom that's a forward, but why is this goalie keep popping up? Yeah, look at the jerseys. Just because you see red doesn't mean it's the Red Wings. <laughs> yeah, that one took me a hot second. But also, also maybe uh, the guy who's playing goalie is your first clue that that's not over talking about. Yeah, the the confusion. Too. There's many questions there that got answered very quickly. You guys should see the text chat that we have between <laughs> one another. I'm like, Derek, my brain hurts. Go ahead. Give us the breakdown on Elmer, please. How do you think Derek feels? We got Elmer here. The correct brother, not the other one. Six round pick, 159th overall in 2019. Dude is a freaking tank at 6'8", 250 pounds. I would not stand anywhere near him if I was in the opposing scene, especially the fact that he's a wiener and not even a defenseman. I, you don't see wieners at this size at all. Like, you're gonna be next. He's literally gonna be standing next to P. Rysaddle at five eight or five ten, literally just getting towered over. I'm like, yes, this is what I want to see. But obviously, we gotta look at the numbers because numbers don't lie. Under his his under nineteen leagues in Sweden. Too bad, close to a kind of point per game. But once he went to the SHL, it didn't really translate as well over. Obviously, we all know the Swedish Hockey League is a little bit more, uh, less goal scoring, more defense. So I can't give him too much leeway in there or say no or yes. But since he was in the NHL, I think he played 21 games, got eight points, and then got sent to the AHL. I basically did the same thing, 20 games, Eight points, I think. So, I mean, he's a young guy, so I anticipate some good stuff from him. And the fact that he is just, by his size alone, it's going to be, I'm hoping, maybe another char out there just on the forward and not the defense. So, overall, I have high hopes. This is probably the highest hopes I have for someone I didn't see play that much. B+. plus. Uh, yeah, uh, you want him to be Char. I want him to be Tage Thompson, preferably. That I mean, that would be amazing. Um, I mean, this really is. Yeah, th- yeah. This is technically our Tage Thompson. Um, and to reiterate on Derek, yeah, he only played 21 games this season with eight points, five goals. I mean, but when he 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 started the opening night roster, I mean, and he started off quick. Like he he looked really freaking good out there. He was hard to get off the puck. He was scoring lights out. I mean, he was making some really nice plays out there. He got sent down because he got injured, so they wanted him to do a conditioning stint down there. And then eventually it was just him ending up just being down there. And I think he got injured there as well. Um, but we talked about it, too, that and it was in the last episode that Grand Rapids Griffins cleared house. Obviously, the scheme wasn't fitting with the Red Wings, so players were getting confused going back and forth on what's good and what isn't. Um, based on what I saw little of him, I thought it was phenomenal. It went way better than I thought it would. I thought he would look like a deer in headlights out there, to be honest with you guys. But 
I'll give him a B. Elmer Soderblom is one of the most intriguing prospects, not only in our pool, but the entire NHL. This dude is a true unicorn. How many guys across really any worldwide league are 6'8", 250 pounds, deking and dangling through defenders? That doesn't happen. I'll tell you who does that. Tage Thompson and pretty much no one else. So, yeah, he's a boomer bust prospect for sure. Um, he has... He can be anything from Tage Thompson to out of the league in three years. I think that he's going to be a massive part of the future for the Red Wings. I am really excited to see him here for a full season. And so, like you said, Zach, he came through. He got off the ground running throughout out, out of training camp. I, yeah, I'm I'm going to give him right now for what he is a, a C because we just haven't really seen too much at the NHL level. But I think he's going to be a absolute stud and i'm so excited to see him here in detroit yeah i think a lot of us are to be honest with you yeah you're exactly right uh let's go ahead and talk about Derek's other favorite player alex chase sound 32 year old six foot four 207 pounds uh he was a former 2009 second round draft pick 38th overall by the dallas stars i honestly never knew that so that's a fun fact for me um you know, never really been – he's never eclipsed over 40 points before. He got 38 in 73 games with the Oilers in 18-19. Kind of started falling off after that. Um, had a stint with Vancouver before coming over to us. Um, he start started with Grand Rapids. He, I remember them saying that, like, yeah, when we called him and signed him to the contract, he was literally just sitting on his couch doing nothing. He wasn't signed or anything. So, um for the Red Wings, 20 games, six goals. I think all but one are on the power play. Uh, nine <laughs> points. You're right. Uh, um, I will say the second power play unit for the Red Wings was garbage. I didn't. It, it looked horrible to me all season. I they thought put me on there. I, and granted, we inserted him on the top power play unit. He looked good. This is a player that I would love to sign. As a depth piece, bottom line, be a mentor to some young players that come in and fill on those fourth line spots. If an injury comes, put him on the third line. You know, he's right handed shooting, so that's a plus as well. I, overall, for the season, for the 20 games, for someone who you typically plays less than 10 minutes a night, nine points in 20 games, I think I'm going to give him a B plus because he came on short notice, literally off his couch. And he just started in the power play right away and looked great. Like he didn't miss a beat. That's what I'm going to give him. I mean, I can't say much worse about that since I probably talked him up the most out of all of us in his first couple of games. <laughs> I was just sitting here like, power play goal, power play goal, power play goal. Sign him again. <laughs> then he kind of, you know, after those four game stints of scoring four in a row in each game in the power plays against Boston and somebody else. He kind of dropped off a little bit, but that's obviously yeah. we kind of expected that. We don't expect him to be that goal every game player. Like Zach said, we peeled him off the couch and we threw him into Grand Rapids and he did well <laughs> there and he came up and now he's doing well up here. Nine <laughs> points in games, man. I, I give him another year contract low level at the fourth line. Let's have some fun with it. <laughs> I don't know why we can't stop laughing about that, Derek. That was pretty funny. Derek, uh, you what fucking was- cracked me up. What was your grade? I didn't even give him a grade. Uh, I go a solid B minus. All right, all right. Let go ahead, Leslie. What's your thoughts on him? Yeah, he's kind of a journeyman forward. Um, won the Cup of Washington in 2018, so he gives that kind of veteran leadership, winning pedigree in the locker room. Um, I'm gonna say something to you guys that is gonna be a little bit depressing, but it's kind of true. Um, he's the best net front presence we've had on the team since Thomas Holmstrom. Like, literally, if you're on a power play and you put that dude in front of the net, he's pretty likely going to score it. So the fact that he came in as a late-season surprise and he's just been scoring on the power play, our miserable power play, I'm going to give him an A-. minus, And I'm not even kidding. Like, that's my grade for him. Like, he, he brought some much-needed scoring to that dismal power play. And let's go on to everyone's favorite depth forward, Adam Ernie. Um, yeah, he's Adam Ernie. Uh 
he can cross check and that's that's about it. Um, F, I don't know. I don't care about Adam Ernie anymore. I never really did. I, his numbers are okay, I guess. I mean, 18 points in 61 games. Uh, okay, whatever. I mean, those guys grow on trees. He can hit the road next year for all I care. Give him an F. I don't care. This is a guy that we traded up. Sorry, Derek, I'll go first. Hold on. Uh, <laughs> we traded a fourth-round pick for him from Tampa. Um, first season, horrible. 56 games played, five points. He started picking it up there. and start, that, The 2021 season is when he got top-line duties with Dylan Larkin when Bertuzzi was out. So he got 20 points in 45 games, and that's, that's when we thought that he was going to explode. Nope, he just went back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity. And, uh... Yeah, last season he got 19 points in 79 games. This season, um, he technically did better. Um, but yeah, like Leslie said, this isn't a player that I was really happy about, I guess. I mean, like I, I didn't really have too high of expectations, but I don't think anyone's going to miss him. I'm trying to keep it this as short as possible. Um, I'm, I'm giving him a C, but I'm not bringing him back next year. Unless it's a cheaper contract and it's a one-year deal and we're putting them on fourth line only. I'm going with a solid D- minus on this, mainly for the fact that I thought he was a player that we just kind of brought up from AHL once in a while and was it a main roster spot for the longest time. So, minus. Cause only thing I realize he does is cross-check people, like Leslie said. <laughs> He's got somewhat of a decent shot, so he's got that going for him. But, um, well, Leslie, you technically have the last person, which is Rasmussen as well. Yeah. So why don't you go ahead and kick that off for Last us, but not least, Michael Rasmussen, man. This is kind of our comeback player the of the moves? year. I mean, for, like, the better part of last year, this dude didn't even look like he should be playing in the NHL. And 29 points in 56 games. It's really a shame that he had to go down with an injury. I think if he played a full season, he'd get around 40 points. And I'm really excited yeah. to see what he can be in the future. I think when this team is in those really intense playoff battles, I think he's going to be a difference maker in the playoffs. He's such a mean forward, and, and he stands at 6'5 or 6'6. Six, six. He's a big guy. Like I I wouldn't want to mess with him with those serial killer eyes. So I I don't think he's unlocked his, to, his true potential just yet. And he's another one of those young guys like uh, Joe Valeno and uh, Bergren who I have high hopes for and I am very excited to see what he can be. I know his season got cut short, but I'm still going to give him a B plus because I really feel like he would have had a massive breakout year if he was healthy the full season. And you can kind of see what our team turned into after he went out. That's pretty much right after we decided to sell off when we started stinking. Like, that's not even a coincidence. Yeah, yeah, I like your grade. Um, he beat his point total from last year in twenty four last less games. That's he. That's a huge improvement for someone. I, I mean, even me, I had I had really big doubts about Michael Rasmussen. I don't know if that's because he had that early jump to the Red Wings and he just looked really out of place. But uh, yeah, I'm minus the injury. I'm giving B plus A minus right in there. Yeah. Yeah, good. He had good stuff this this year. I almost said a bad word. Go ahead, Derek. Oh, how dare you say a bad word? Because they have only been flying out of my mouth all night for some reason. But yeah, I agree with you both right now. And oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I might have to sounds go like something's really excited about Michael Rasmussen just, back there. The puppies are really just, happy right now. Just give continue. me one second. <laughs> yeah, I'll edit this. No, leave okay. that in. Leave it in. <laughs> it's okay. Just go ahead. Okay, Megan gave me all that. Then we're good. But <laughs> so he's using a solid A minus. God damn, I hate these times. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, like you guys said, he had a good year comeback after last year. After we all had the doubts, so solid A minus will definitely stick with them, and hopefully, he does the same thing next year, just even better. So. And that concludes our forward grade list. So Wait, can I do one let more? Let us know in the comments if you guys agree with us. Can I do one what? more? Can I do one more? 
Um, this is going to be thinking a little ha- ahead, but um, this is actually technically for next season. Uh, Connor Bedard, A plus 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 plus. Best player I've ever seen. <laughs> All hail Magic Con. All hail Magic Con. All, All right. So, yeah, that wraps it up for our forwards grades list that we had. And like we mentioned, next episode we will do the defenders, the goalies, and then we'll do the overall team grade. Um, Yeah, this is a pretty long episode, so thank you for continuously watching us as we ramble on. Uh, But let's go ahead and get into the draft prospect profile. So let's get silly for Adam Fantilli real quick, everyone. So (laughs) this guy. I mean, you guys heard what we said about Bedard, right? In the last episode. Yeah. This guy. This guy. Not as good. He's definitely got a little less goodness than Bedard. I know I kind of said that weird. Um, He's definitely got his issues. I'm probably going to cut this part out. I don't know why I'm talking about that. So, yeah, let's get silly for Adam <laughs> Sanchez. <Santoy, so. laughs> he has erectile dysfunction. Something like that. So, God damn it. Okay. <laughs> We're keeping so, it let's, go ahead, let's go ahead and kick it off with our draft prospect profile, and let's get silly with Adam Fantilli. Majority consensus number two overall pick for majority of the mock drafts that you will see out there. Um, some might say Mitchkov. Some might say Leo Carlson. We'll touch on those players in other episodes. But majority, yes, consensus number over overall pick. Uh a little bit about this guy. He's out of the University of Michigan this year. 65 points in 36 games, 30 goals, 35 assists. Uh, the season before that, he came out of the USHL with the Chicago Steel. 54 games, 37 goals, 37 assists, 74 points. And Derek and I were talking today, and we realized that we were watching the same exact YouTube episode to get some dirt on Adam Fantilli as a player, which is okay. That means great minds think alike. So... The thing that we learned about him is that looking back on all NCAA players since 1990-91 season, Adam Fantilli ranks third most points in a season by all U19 players in the last 30 years. If you look back in the last 20 years, he's only behind Jack Eichel in that. And Jack Eichel put up 1.78 points per game in his one season Fantilli put up 1.772 points per game. That Does anyone else find that ridiculously good? I mean, I, to be honest with you guys, I, I think that he has an opportunity to be better than Jack Eichel. I really do think he, he can be. Like, he's – just the way he plays, he might not have the shot of Jack Eichel, but his skating, his shooting – Granted, his shooting, he could probably work on his accuracy a little bit. He shoots a lot and he misses a decent amount, but his skating, just everything about him as a player, I mean, what can't this guy do? He wins faceoffs, he's a center, um, hits people, creates plays, just has amazing IQ. And I do think that his skating is one of his best abilities. Uh, he knows how to read plays really well. Um, just a ridiculous overall player. Um, Derek, I want to hear from you because you also listen to the same uh, and watch the same YouTube uh, channel as I did. So uh, kind of fill me in here. What did I miss out on? What did you see that you like about Adam Fantilli? I mean, obviously, we did watch the same thing, so got a lot of the same information. But obviously, everyone else didn't watch that, so that's what we're here. But I was, like, the kid has some great insight as a college player in a D1 league like this. Like, beyond crazy what he can do. And comparing him to Jack Eichel, like, they're – very similar skating and playing techniques and skills, but it seems Fantilli definitely has the upper hand just in what this actual broad skills that he has. His movement and whatnot looks a lot better and smoother than Jack Eichel's did back then. Obviously, if you look up to Jack Eichel now, he has the experience that he needs. But if you look at him like these two guys in the last 20 years, I didn't go 30 like Zach, but in the last 20 years, we've had like the top leaders in this league where Jack Eichel got Fantilli now. And then after that was, we. I'm pretty sure, what was it, Phil Kessel, Ken Johnson, Beneers, got some toes in there, and our coveted Tage Thompson that we're hoping that our Soderblom turns into. Like, all these guys are just destroying the league, and all of them got drafted up in the top five or earlier, except Tage Thompson, obviously, 26 in there. But being at point, eight, I think he was at point eight nine points per game back then, 
going 26 in the draft, not bad at all still. I believe that's second round still. Oh, that's first round. What am I saying? Yeah, uh, Adam Fantilli is an absolutely incredible player. Um, I, you've seen what he's done at the U of M. He's a Hobie Baker winner. There's definitely a lot of very fair comparisons to Jack Eichel, and I think a lot of people were doing that just based on the fact that Connor Bedard is that you know extraordinary generational talent, and then we have this center who plays in the NCAA who is really close to actually Jack Eichel's point total. So I think that's a great comparison to one player in the NHL if he had to do it. Um, as Zach said, he definitely has a chance to be better than Michael, but that's really just based on the fact that he stays healthy, which remains to be seen. And I kind of see him more as being like a playmaking center in the NHL. I, I think he still has like 25, 30 goal upside, but I I just think his playmaking is absolutely top notch. It's elite. I think it's the best thing that he does. Um, he, he just is tremendous at making moves to open up the ice and create scoring chances for himself and his team. Um, and this is going to sound a little crazy, but I think he has one trait in his game that is better than Connor Bedard's. I think his intensity and his competitiveness is through the damn roof. I mean, this is a guy who will run yeah. through a brick wall for his team and he's going to excite everybody around him. He's going to pump up the energy in that locker room. When that guy scores goals, they usually start coming in waves when that Michigan team plays. I mean, he's just such a such a high competitor, and he really fits that Eisman mold beautifully, which, you know, of course means that we're not going to get him because he's exactly what we need in a center in this organization. But, yeah, I, I love his game. I, I think even if Detroit can move up to second overall, this is going to be a franchise centerman right here. This is going to be a huge piece of the team moving forward. Maybe they'll compete for Cubs right away, like if they get Bedard, but he is going to be a really, really solid talent to put on this roster. So I think with, if you somehow get him and you have the one-two punch behind Larkin and Fantilli, I mean, that's about as good as you can get in the NHL. That's all of a sudden we have some top-end center depth. So, yeah, I, I really like Adam Fantilli. I'm banging the table for if we just can't get first overall, which – I've learned at this point not to ask for too much because we're, we just don't get lucky with these things. Just at least give us second. We'll, we'll take second. It's fine. I won't say no to that. Batman, now. if you're listening and watching, we'll take second. Please. We'll take the number two meal. Um, yeah. <laughs> while you were talking, Leslie, I was interested to see the full, and by full comparison with Jack Eichel, I wanted to see height, weight, everything like that. They're the same height. I didn't realize that. In They're literally the same Jack player. I also didn't realize that Jack. Jack, how much do you think he weighs? Probably the same as Fantilli. Um, no, he's got thirty pounds on Fantilli. Oh, okay. Well, like he's also older, so I guess that's not really fair. Yeah, I, yeah. By <laughs> by eight years, so yeah, that definitely helps out yeah. a lot. But Jack Eichel weighs two hundred and fourteen pounds. I, I didn't realize he was that big of a boy. No, he's a fatty. To be honest with you, <laughs> not like that. That's okay. <laughs> He doesn't mean that, Jack Eichel. You can come to the wings too if you want. Just leave Vegas. We're a lot cooler. Yeah, you, we got, you can come. You can come to the Red Wings. Just, you can come to the Red Wings. Just put the hamburgers down. Yeah, <laughs> but for me, with with Adam Fantilli, you know, for me and my final thoughts on him, you know, my top three things for him are his skating. I love his skating, um, especially for someone who's six two, one hundred and eighty seven pounds. Um, someone who does need to add some weight, like we just said with Jack Eichel, he's got thirty pounds on him. Um, I think he's got really nice edges. I think his shooting is good. He tends to miss, but he's got a real powerful release. He just shoots a lot, and he'll be able to figure that out once he gets to the NHL, I'm sure. And then I love his compete level and his hockey IQ, like you said, Leslie. Um, he hits, he chases pucks, he creates takeaways, he stick lifts opposing players. You know, he'll get behind the net, he'll battle in from the net, and he just knows where to be at all points of the game. He he knows how to get back and plug in for his defenseman if they chip in and move up a little bit. He's just all around. He's got good instincts as a player, and this is someone who can definitely come in and help out the Red Wings. Uh, things to improve on, like I said, is accuracy. He tends to puck watch at times. Not a lot, but he will. Um, that's something that will get broken eventually. Um, and then the other thing I noticed, he just... I don't know if it's because he's young and because he's good, but he will try to do a little too much where he'll try to get fancy and sometimes it'll come back to bite him in the butt a little bit. 
Um, that's really all I got on the downsides of him. I mean, those are just things that he just needs to improve on. That's it. And those are all real, realistic things that he can work on and improve and make himself better. Does anyone else want to add any thoughts on to Adam Fantilli before we close out all this prospect profile here with Hockey Town University? Yeah, so I, I just kind of want to put it out there. Um, when this guy gets to the NHL, no matter what team he's playing for, there's not a whole lot that he's going to have to learn. Pretty much the only thing he's yeah. going to have to do is elevate his game to the NHL level, which I don't think it will take him that long. Maybe the first 10 or 15 games he might be a little quiet and maybe a little sheltered, but this is a kid who has all the tools, and he just has to get up to NHL competition, and he'll be, I think he'll be a star center. Maybe he could be a superstar. Uh, that remains to be seen. I, I think he definitely has all the ceiling to do it, but this dude is going to be a star center. There's no question about it. Yeah, 100%. And uh, so that wraps it up for our prospect profile. And while I speak on the upcoming, on what's upcoming for Hockey Town University, I realized that I just said that twice. It's late at night. Um, Derek, pull up your... Uh, bracket for us your playoff bracket but in the meantime upcoming our next episode will finish off our player grades like i kept on saying and round up the season with an overall grade uh we'll finish off with the defensemen the goalies as well and then next episode we will discuss amongst ourselves whether if we're going to do the prospect profile of leo carlson or met vey mitchkov um if you guys are interested go ahead and leave that down in the comments for us as well on what you guys would like to hear from us talk about on our next prospect profile uh but in the meantime here's Derek with his playoff bracket so just kind of tell us a little breakdown of it Derek you don't have to go too full in depth just tell us what you have for each game of the series um and who's winning the ship well as you can see plenty in my screen I got Edmonton and Boston meeting in the finals right now kind of scared with that choice Obviously, as Edmonton has down to zero to two right now in the playoffs. But what I think I got, we got uh, Colorado and Seattle right now. I got Colorado going. I believe I might have them in like what four? Colorado in six. It looks like I have to go off of what I actually put because I don't remember. I just did this really quick. <laughs> but yeah, Colorado in six. Hopefully, uh, after playing Seattle, they're going to come back a little bit there. So make me right. Got Dallas in five, which obviously is not going to happen now. So that's way off. It's, but hopefully they that's might. That's not win. true. It could still happen. You're a liar. That still could happen. It Have could, faith in yourself. Technically, could happen if they win four straight. True. Then we got Vegas in seven, baby. I want my Vegas team to make it all the way to the end, but I already know when they play LLA or the Vegas Knight or Vegas Knights, the Vegas, Vegas Edmonton Oilers, they are not going to do well in that standpoint. So. Obviously, whoever plays against Edmonton or L.A., it looks like right now, which I have in six with Edmonton, doesn't look that good either in that standpoint. But, oh, well, they're still shooting for Edmonton when the next four. <laughs> and then we got everybody meeting in the play. I've got Colorado and Edmonton. Edmonton, obviously, we should win that. But then if we go up, if I can go up, Boston, of course. If you didn't pick Boston to go all the way, there's something wrong with you at this point. Of course, we got Toronto completely losing. I haven't been seven this year, but man, after that last game, I don't think it should have been seven. I should have put four down. Oh my god, <laughs> Jesus! I, I gave them the benefit <laughs> of the doubt not to get completely blown out this year, but Jesus, if that's what they're gonna do, I should have changed it so fast. I I had Toronto in seven, buddy. So I feel you. Oh, Jesus Christ! Well, then if we want to roll on down, we got. Carolina and Matt Leslie's favorite team for some reason in the NHL, New York Islanders. I have that game in five, but, you know, obviously it's looking like it's going to go a lot quicker. They're tied at two right now, so you're about to look stupid. Hey, they have to win one game, so that's all I need. They'll win, they'll win four. How about that? Islanders win are winning three to two. Fate. Islanders up three to two. Hey, Let's go, baby. I said they have to win one, so. Carolina in five, my ass. All right, go ahead, Derek. <laughs> then we got the Rangers in New Jersey. Obviously, that should be a pretty hard-hitting competition between those two teams. So, but So I got it in seven, but I got the Rangers beating them out on that one. And after the first game, it kind of looks like it might be a close running match. I think the score is pretty far apart, if I remember, like 4-2. Not too sure. Wasn't watching that one. But obviously, I got them meeting up with Carolina in the semis. Not the semis, the quarterfinals here. 
Don't know what I have them going to in the league, but Carolina obviously should beat them just because of their stack defense. I mean, they're not a hard-hitting team with the points, obviously, that like we talked about in the past, but that defense should be able to stop New York with all their points that they get with their offense. So, obviously, meeting up with them would be Boston, and Boston should tank Carolina just because they're all around just so much better in general. Then Boston at the end with, obviously, we see right down here, there's going to be a whole five goals scored in the whole series in the Stanley Cup <laughs> Championship. <laughs> yeah, we got, we got Edmonton in five, and the, all the games are going to be one goal games. Somehow the less boring than a goal final we've ever game. seen. Less than yeah, I, I thought that was what the last game would be. I didn't realize it was the whole series when I typed that in, so I'm hoping I'm still right. You know, five goals, four games, let's go. Shit, oh, we, wow. we, we won't know until we get to the finals, will we? We truly won't. I could be right on all this. It's still a chance. Well, that's all you get to see. Let's hope I'm right. But at the same time, I'm probably 100% wrong because I'm the worst betting man in the world. Don't worry, man. We're probably all wrong. That's how I feel when I do my brackets, too. But it's uh, pretty weird. No one, well, none of us plan to all select Edmonton to win the cup. So I thought that that was pretty interesting. Um it's going to suck when we're all wrong. <laughs> but it's going to be interesting to see who gets the most points at the end of the day. So uh, look forward to that. That will be, uh, obviously, when the Stanley Cup playoffs uh, come to an end, when uh, we find out who wins. Hopefully it's Edmonton. Then it's going to be even more interesting <laughs> that we all pick the same team. But uh, let's go ahead and close it off. We know that we've been recording for a long time. But first and foremost, we definitely appreciate you guys for sticking around. If you guys do make it to the tail end of this episode, yes, it is long. Once again, we apologize. But for those of you that are new, thanks for joining us and sticking around towards the end as well. As always, make sure you're hitting that subscribe button. That goes a long way. And smashing the like button really does go a long way as well. I like to see if we can get up to 10 likes. Uh, that seems to be the goal for our longer episodes that we do. So I would love to see that. And once again, leave comments down below. Tell us what you guys thought about the episode, what you'd like to see us do upcoming in this off season for this summer. You know, we want to give you guys more entertainment, more content for you guys, but we have a lot of ideas upcoming. So stick around with us to hear more, see more. And uh, let's close off with some final thoughts. Derek, take it away. Oh, uh, well, the Red Wings are done. It sucks to watch hockey right now. Go Vegas, I guess. Islanders suck. They're going to lose in four. Screw you, yeah, man. I don't, three, two I don't know. Right now. And right, what, Leslie, what, what, period, what period is it? What period is it? It's a third period, so go ahead. Keep saying more wrong things. You're doing great. I really hope they lose now. They're going to come back yeah, and they get their butt whooped. All right, Leslie, final thoughts, buddy. Yeah, let's go Red Wings. Uh, Derek, uh, you're an idiot. Uh, Carolina is not going to win this series. Uh, Zach, you're also an idiot because you pick Carolina to win. Uh, you're both morons. I'm the smartest one in the room. Um, yeah, Islanders are going to win this uh, until they don't, and then I look like a total donkey. But that's the that's the risk that I'm willing to take. Um, let's go Islanders, Stanley Cup champions. My final thoughts are you're both psycho lunatics. Uh, go to the loony bin. You need it. And uh, go Red Wings. Uh, Islanders or the Carolina just tied it three to three. Leslie, suck it. Islanders suck. Um, and uh, once again, let's go Red Wings. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Hockey Town University. Everyone, take care. Once again, go Red Wings. Bye. Bye.